The first legal slave owner in American history was a black tobacco farmer named Anthony Johnson. Possibly true. The wording of the statement is important. Anthony Johnson was not the first slave owner in American history, but he was, according to historians, among the first to have his lifetime ownership of a servant legally sanctioned by a court. A former indentured servant himself, Anthony Johnson was a free Negro who owned a 250-acre farm in Virginia during the 1650s, with five indentured servants under contract to him. One of them, a black man named John Casser, claimed that his term of service had expired years earlier and Johnson was holding him illegally. In 1654, a civil court found that Johnson, in fact, owned Casser's services for life, an outcome historian R. Halliburton Jr. calls one of the first known legal sanctions of slavery, other than as a punishment for crime. So apparently, according to this statement, the first American slave owner was black. <laughs> well, this is pretty interesting because, as we all know, through the history books, white people were the slave owners. And black people were the slaves. So here we have Shaka Amos. He has a, well, he doesn't have a book. He has referenced several times a book known as uh, Black Masters, White Slaves. But perhaps he's going to go ahead and get into depth in terms of not just the overall history of slave, but American history. Oh my God, this is bugging out, bro. So, uh, so Shaka, yeah. What do you think about that, man? Um, What's going on? Is this even true or is this just a bunch of nonsense BS? Well, um, I would say uh, it depends on who wrote it. Uh, white people do not have a good track record of always telling the truth when it comes to history. <laughs> Coming this hot, so, yeah. All right, man. But I, I look, they, white people will tell you that, right? White folks will tell you that, you know, they don't have the best track record, um, you know, when it comes to telling the truth about history. So, you know, if that's the case, then I would take it with a grain of salt. You know, uh, you know, a lot of times it's about context. I've, I've, um, I've heard, uh, I've heard that um, anecdote mentioned uh, before. I haven't given it much study. I have perused it. I've looked at it. I'm not going to say that I haven't looked at some of the literature on it. Um, again, uh, everything in context. Right, Every, everything in context. That's that's what I would say when okay. it comes to that's that. That's a perfect answer. All right, let's go to the next one. Let's try to make yeah. this quick. Right. Well, I also have another question. Um, people will use that fact to say that uh, a, slavery wasn't about race. Um, do you agree with that? Does this fact disprove anything about American slavery and it being about race? Um, I think anybody that says that slavery was not about race in America is historically illiterate right. and um they've never seen confederate money right so mm -hmm. when you see those confederate bills there's literally no question in your mind as to what slavery was about right there's literally there's literally no question in your mind as to whether or not if there was a racial component to slavery i think it's silly in fact um most of the best, I mean, you know, I, I I did make a kind of a slight at the honesty or the forthrightness of white historians, but some of the best historians on the racialness, the explicit racialness in, uh, embedded in American slavery um, are white historians themselves. There's some really, really good white historians who, I mean, when you listen to them, talk about their experiences while doing the research and looking at the, going into the annals of history, like some of them had nervous breakdowns because they didn't realize that slavery was that brutal and it was that bad because they were, had always been given anecdotes about, oh, it was just this, it was just that, the slaves were happy, yada, 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 until they actually did the research and their minds were absolutely blown. They were like, mm -hmm. no, like this is like Nazi shit. Like, <laughs> you know, this is concentration camp shit. You know, yeah. and that's what black people came up through. Um, I look at I look at it like like this, right? That period of history was brutal for everybody. This is what I'm telling you. It was brutal for everybody. It just happened to be a it happened to be an eternal nightmare for the black generations that had to undergo it. Because if everybody's living, imagine. Imagine the three of you 
inside of a nightmare. But one of you gets the full brunt force of the nightmare. Mm -hmm. You're going to you're gonna have a, whoever that one is, he's going to have a very different perspective about that nightmare than the other two. Mm -hmm. You understand? And so um, that's how I look at slave, that period. I don't just say slavery. People talk about slavery like it existed in the vacuum. Don't just say slavery. Say that period. Because yeah. in that period, Native Americans were being wiped out. Mm -hmm. yeah. They were being wiped out with smallpox. They were being wiped out with just being in the presence of white people because white people carried so many diseases from Europe, you can't even count them. Yeah. Right? So um, it's amazing when, when, when you hear white people make racist comments about black people being animals when, 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 when with all due respect, you know, your race is the poster children for disease. And and uh, and uh, what do you call it? Um, uh, what's the word I'm thinking of? Disease and um, play. That is another word that I just can't think of. But um, yeah, and not only that, diseases. I was going to say disease and vermin, but the, a lot of the diseases they got came from vermin, rats. You know, rats mm -hmm. uh, 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 um, uh, stowing away on ships and. Uh, uh, being introduced into the uh into the uh ecology of of great britain right yeah uh, uh and, and and causing all kind of diseases and then also just the, the the dirt and the filth of 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 greater london like that stuff is legendary when your dirt and your filth is legendary you don't really want to be talking about other people's hygiene like it's not cool because that's your ancestral lineage if we're going to be honest yeah. Right. And we've all seen the Oliver Twist movies and that. Can I have another piece of shit? <laughs> you know, we've all seen that shit. You know, chimney sweepers with the dirt on their face and you know whatever, whatever. But you know, uh, with respect to uh, um, that whole period, see, I prefer to, I prefer to look at it as a period. Makes sense. Yeah. Right. When you look at it as a period, look at the situation everybody was in. Right. Mm -hmm. People forget that there were there were white slaves. We called them indentured servants, but they were still slaves. Mm -hmm. Were they ever, uh, like, in the situation with the first fact, were they ever made slaves for life? No, they were not made slaves. Well, here's the thing. You kind of got to, you got to think about business. All good businessmen find loopholes. And if having slaves as part of your um, service, right, your core V service, Right, if having if having slaves as part of your core service adds to your wealth, you are not going to be in a rush to get rid of your white slaves, right? So they found ways to keep them enslaved while giving them status above their black slaves, mm -hmm. right? So they would tell the indentured servant, "Oh yes, you're free," but free is what? Free is just a word in the dictionary. Yeah, right, that's all free. Is the word in the dictionary? It doesn't mean that they could. It doesn't mean that they just went off the next day and did everything that the master did, because there's no real freedom without economic freedom. Which means mm -hmm. how much did your status really change? And in fact, when you get down to the whole black-white thing in America, the first thing that people are going to tell you to look at is Bacon's Rebellion. Right? Are you are you familiar with Bacon's Rebellion? I've heard of it before. It's been a long time. You've learned about it in history but yeah. it was a long time ago. Yeah. Right. So I'm pretty sure it's Bacon's Rebellion. Can we, can um, we can look it up real quick, Joseph? Yeah. yeah uh, yeah. Sounds pretty important. Just look it up, put it on the screen. I'm pretty sure it's Bacon's Rebellion. Um, yeah. You know, my, my, my knowledge of ancient history is far more astute than um, recent history. All right, but, Alan, you got that. Bacon's Rebellion was an armed rebellion held by Virginia settlers that took place from 1676 to 1677. Right. Led by Nathaniel Bacon against Colonel, I mean, Colonial Governor William Berkeley after Berkeley refused Bacon's request to drive Native Americans out of Virginia. Right. So what happened was that when the, when the white masses basically turned on the Commonwealth and turned on the government, the wealthy white people were like, oh shit, we are about to become undone. So what they did was they Joseph, can you make it just about it? What they did was um 
of fact, let me just double check. It should take me one yeah, second. Yeah, I recall it was right around hold on, the hold on, time hold on. Let me see. of a civil, civil war. Here we go. Hold on. Oh, I think this is it right here. Hold on one second. I just want to make sure I got it. Da, 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 da. I'm just looking for the one that I need. Hold on. Oh, come on. I mean, if you're going to reference something, damn it, they should reference it properly. <laughs> okay, hold on one second. Uh, okay, so then not. It is, this is a general fucking... Yeah, it is Bacon's Rebellion. Yeah. Right, so uh, I'm going to share my screen very quickly. All right? Yes, you just have to look at the right thing because what I'm looking at, they might not tell you in the Wikipedia article. Um, here we go. So I'm going to share my screen, share screen, and I'm going to go to, this should be it right here, yeah. Okay. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes. yes. Okay, great. Let me just get rid of this. All right. So it says, um, oh, shit. That's all right. So this is uh, called The Invention of Whiteness, The Long History of a Dangerous Idea, right? So we're just going to go right back to our world, which is Bacon, right? So it mm -hmm. says, the plantation owners understood very well that their cool treatment of indentured Europeans and their even cooler treatment of enslaved Africans might lead to thoughts, or worse, of vengeance. Significantly outnumbered, all right, you heard that? The plantation owners were outnumbered by the indentured servants and the Africans, who, of whom they both they treated both of them cruelly, okay? Mm -hmm. They lived in the constant fear of uprisings. They were particularly afraid of incidents such as Bacon's Rebellion in 1676, which saw indentured Europeans fighting side by side with free and enslaved Africans against Virginia's colonial government. Did you hear that? Mm -hmm. yep. All right. To ward off such events, the plantation owners initially sought to protect themselves by giving their Christian servants, Christian used as a dog whistle for white. That's why it's in the mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Right? Their Christian servants' legal privileges not available to their enslaved Negroes, okay? This is how whites became white in America. Uh, the idea was to buy off the allegiance of indentured Europeans with a set of entitlements that, however meager, set them above enslaved Africans. So white people who didn't have anything in this country, the one thing that they were given which they still hold on to this very day. The one thing that they were given that black people were not given was they were given status by virtue of the color of their skin under mm -hmm. the guise of religion. That's why the Christian right is so prevalent in this in our power structure in this country. Because that's basically where they get their impetus from. Toward the end of the 17th century, this scheme witnessed a significant shift Many of the laws that regulated slave and servant behavior, the 1681 Servant Act in Jamaica, for example, which was later copied for use in South Carolina, began to describe the privileged class as whites and not as Christians. Okay? Mm -hmm. So yep. don't forget this. You shouldn't have to be taught this twice. This is how yep. white people in mass got power in America and how whiteness became a thing in America. Are we clear mm -hmm. on that? Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Okay. That's great. To be honest, that's not how they taught us that in school at all. Not at all. Oh, they didn't tell you that in school? Nope. <laughs> they just, I mean, they mentioned it and then they mentioned like the Wikipedia answer that uh, Joseph pulled up. 
but it wasn't like they didn't explain all that. Well, well, well there you have it. I mean, I just get that. That's the real deal that I just read to you. That's not some fringe. Yeah. Uh, I mean, no matter where you are. Uh, uh, yeah, this is from the Guardian. I mean, the Guardian is pretty reputable. Pretty, yeah, pretty reputable um, journalism. So, mm. uh, and right. so the way the way they taught it to us, they, they taught it in like different, in different uh, like categories modules. here, in different modules. Yeah, so right. they they first taught us about uh, you know the Native Americans, and they introduced bacon in with that, and they taught us about slavery, and did not include the Bacon Rebellion with that. Oh, as they didn't well. tell you about that. <laughs> yeah, that's the they most part of the rebellion. That's how whites became white in America. Prior to that, it was just the have and the have nots, which is why you could have a black slave owner at that time that you mentioned previously. Mm, yeah. It was really just about, it was purely economics, mm -hmm. but yeah. race was introduced as a tool uh, in order to manage uh, the society and to manage numbers. Race has a lot to do with numbers, which is why you have so many immigrants flooding New York right now and America in general. All of that is about managing the numbers of races to contain blackness in America. All of it. Black people have a hard time with understanding that they're literally at the center of all policies in this country. Yeah, I didn't say some, most, or many. I said all policies. Black mm -hmm. people are at the center of it. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. All right. So yeah, fact number could, two. We could, we could skip all the facts. Honestly, that was like good that, was, that, was, that, was, right. that was valid right there. Right? Unless we could just we could just scroll down the list without cutting between each fact. Just kind of like go down the list, and if you find something that's like you disagree with, you could just be like, all right, let's 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 stop right there, type of shit. You feel me? So just like read the titles. What's what's this list? It's just a list that I saw Nine on facts um, about slavery. Yeah, it's just a list that I actually YouTube recommended. It, it was like a, I looked up the truth about slavery, and YouTube had like one of those little like um. Uh, to give you like a little like precaution, not a precaution, but like a little like a summary or like a little description of what you're looking up, and it'll give you like a link to like get more information. And so I okay. clicked on the link, and this is what they showed up nine facts about slavery. So I'm just going through some of the facts, and we're gonna see if this is accurate. That's all. So yeah, we're gonna go through the that's rest of them uninterrupted, and then we'll go ahead and we'll and then if it's anything that pops out to you, you can just stop right, stop us whenever you want. But um, the next okay, one, sure. Alan, go ahead. American Indians owned thousands of black slaves. Facts. Mm. I didn't know that. Go down. Oh, yeah. There's a great book on it, in fact. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's called, let me see. Um, what is it? Hold on. Um, Wait, how do they own, like, on, on, like, the reservations or, like? Uh, hold on. Uh, oh, it is. It's called Black Slaves Indian Masters. Here it is, right here. I'm sharing my screen with you. Mm. Yeah. Oh yeah, they big time. Oh yeah, Native Americans owned slaves big time. They they enslaved catchings, all of that stuff. What's that? What's that? What's catching? Kind of horse, like just going around, just catching free slaves on a horse. Yeah. Dude, I, I don't know what catching <laughs> is honestly. They was they was getting down for the get down. Hold on one second. Here you go. Um, present, uh, presenting, um, I'm surprised I even remember the name of that. Here you go. This is the book right here. You can put it on the screen. Black Slaves, Indian Masters. Hmm. Yeah. All right, Alan, you can go ahead and read that. Um, so I'll read this for you right here. If you want. Oh, no, who, go ahead. Uh, Alan, you go ahead and read it. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Black Slaves, Indian Masters, Slavery, Emancipation, and Citizenship in the Native American South by Barbara Crothamer. From the late 18th century th uh, through the end of the Civil War, Choctaw and Chickasaw Indians bought, sold, and owned Africans and African Americans as slaves. Read that part that again. Country... Read that part again so that you don't forget it. From the late 18th century through the end of the Civil War, Choctaw and Chickasaw Indians bought, sold, and owned Africans and African Americans as slaves a fact that persisted after the tribe's removal from the deep south to Indian territory. So they were doing it even after they had been removed by the white people, they were still enslaving black people, the native. Mm. Continue. The tribes formulated racial and gender ideologies that justified this practice and marginalized free black people in the Indian nations well after the Civil War and slavery had ended. So you Through see that? End of you hear that? You yeah. hear that? They also yep. marginalized the free black people in the Indian nations, meaning that even though you had blacks that were absorbed into these Indian nations, so-called Indians, they were marginalized. In other words, they were they had Jim Crow status even within the Indians. 
So it doesn't matter if you was with the whites or with the Indians. You were still bottom of the totem pole, literally. Mm-hmm. I told you, everybody down with it. Continue. Through the end of the 19th century, ongoing conflicts among Choctaw, Chickasaw, and U.S. lawmakers left untold numbers of former slaves and their descendants in the two Indian nations without citizenship in either the Indian nations or the United States. In this groundbreaking study, Barbara Barbara Krothamer rewrites the history of Southern slavery, emancipation, race, and citizenship to reveal the centrality of Native American slaveholders and the Black people they enslaved. Krothamer's exam... Yep. Continue. Okay. Krothamer's examination of slavery and emancipation highlights the ways Indian women's gender roles changed with, with the arrival of slavery and changed again after emancipation and reveals complex dynamics of race that shaped the lives of Black people and Indians both before and after removal. Okay, so when you hear Black people in America talking about, I'm not African, I'm part Native American, you know what I tell them? Shut up. (laughs) You're stupid. (laughs) You bragging about you going from one slave master to the next. (laughs) My girl, funny enough, she's half, she's not half Black, she has some Native American in her, she's Black too. I tell you, yeah, she. I tell you, you got you a former slaves on both sides. <laughs> That's what you are. I'm trying to see what type of what tribe she. But was. I thought um, uh, Native Americans were also slaves too, like certain tribes or something. I don't know. Um, I wouldn't say that they were enslaved. Um, because if slavery had worked with the Native Americans, um, they would not have found it fit to come to Africa to get us. Yeah, that's true. Okay, uh, this, the the Native Americans in America really did not have a whole lot to contribute to what Europeans were looking for. Europeans were looking for real agriculture, right? They wanted, they needed real agricultural society to reproduce over here what they were reproducing, what they were producing in their own land. And Native mm-hmm. Americans didn't really have an agricultural society, so-called Native Americans. They didn't really have an agricultural society. They lived by hunting, gathering. They were hunter-gatherers. Yeah. Right? Um, However, those societies within the Americas um, further south, like Mexico, um, the Mayan, the um, Mm -hmm. Olmec, right? The Azteca, right? These civilizations are civilizations, what we call pre-Columbian civilizations. Um, They were very influenced by Africans, right? Mm -hmm. So because they were very influenced by Africans, you are therefore going to find a lot of the organized agricultural endeavors the same as you would have seen in Africa, Mm -hmm. right? But where you find that natives did not um explicitly uh intermingle and uh um um uh, sexually co-mingle with africans you will find that for them there's a distance from agriculture why because they weren't really counterparts like that mm-hmm. right not the way it was in like pre-columbian america wait so how, how did uh how did columbia in america right like pretty much South America uh, and everything in there. How, how do they like get that inspiration from the Africans with like a large, like, you know, distance gap between the two? Well, Africans had been coming to America long before Columbus. Hmm. You didn't know that? No, I did not, did not know that part. I remember oh. you saying it in the past, but I did not remember by what means. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'll tell you what, I'll let you, I'll let you read a quote. Uh, let's see here. Man, I mean, don't they teach you guys anything? <laughs> like what? Like what the? <laughs> Tony, man, Alan was the one, the the history um savant amongst all of us, and if you don't know some of this, I'm, I'm definitely lost, bro. I go. heard about I heard about the Native American contact with Africans. Like they had the same um, like those similarities in like their religions and like the way they had um gold and used gold. Um, like there was like links between the cultures, so it was hypothesized. And also, I believe there was like Native Americans that claimed that, like there was like black kings that had come like right centuries prior. And right. Stuff. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. 
Okay, so I'm gonna share my screen. Hold on one sec. Hopefully you can see it. Um all right. So it's like going... the void century or something. Yeah. A time where like black kings were traveling across seas and oceans. Like, yeah, well, Africa's closer to Africa's yeah, closer yeah. to North America than like anywhere else, I'm pretty sure. Here we go. Uh let me see. Uh let me look at that. Right, so I'm gonna share my screen right now. Uh, present, share screen, share screen. I'm going to go full. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Full and all right. Can you see my text? Can you see this right here? Yes. All right. Mm -hmm. You can read it from right here, right underneath where it says part one. Read it from here. In 1862, I was in the region of San Andres Tuxtla, a town in the state of Veracruz in Mexico. During my excursions, I learned that a colossal head had been unearthed a few years before. On my arrival at the hacienda, I asked the owner of the prop, the owner of the property where the head was discovered, to take me to look at it. We went, and I was struck with surprise. As a work of art, it was without exaggeration a magnificent sculpture. What astonished me was the Ethiopic type represented. I reflected that there had undoubtedly been Negroes in this country, and that this had been in the first epoch of the world. Jose Meglar. Jose Meglot. Mexican Society of Geography and Statistics. Thank you. All right. So when somebody's telling you you're being Afro, when somebody tells you you're being Afrocentric, the first thing you tell them is, my name is not Jose, my name is not Meglar, and I'm not a member of the Mexican Society of Geography and Statistics. So I'm not being the Afrocentrist. Right? Mm -hmm. They love to use that word so loosely, and they don't even they don't even bother to make sure it makes sense when they're using it. So, um, and there's another book. Uh, that you can read called They Came Before Columbus by, um, and I'll share my screen. Hey, my man, have you had something to eat today? Yo, you, you're not as high tempered as uh, you usually are, man. Who's that? Me? I've been doing yeah, a lot of work, man. I've been doing, you, man. I've been doing a lot of work, bro. You be, huh? You tired. I understand, bro. No, I've been doing a lot of work, you know? Yeah, uh, right, I told you I'm producing a web series. So, um, yeah, a lot of work, a lot of work. Hey, I, so I, I, I got to say, I think one of the reasons why the video performed so well, the last video was, uh, was like how like passionate and like, you know, high tempered you were. Um, that's, that's, <laughs> there's something wrong that's with that. Right don't worry, look, that's okay. All it does is, all we do is got to hit the right topic. It'll come, it'll, it'll, it'll come right to the You're surface. Right. It's yeah. always right underneath. <laughs> it's always right underneath. Yeah. And not only that. Who knows what I was going through at that point in time? Because there's a whole lot of things going on behind the scenes with me that people don't see. Mm -hmm. right? I might have had a hard day with the cast. I might have been dealing with directors and producers. All kind of sh people just driving me crazy. Tenants not paying their rent on time. Whatever it is. I don't know. You know? Oh, you you, know, you own some real estate? Well, yeah. I'm a landlord. Oh, mm -hmm. Don't try yeah, to be a landlord, too, man. Well, there's <laughs> quite a few ways to um come by that. Oh, we got um, a lot to talk about, man. Hey, you the yeah. good of you guy that says that the world runs around uh, economics, so I'm gonna clearly have to hit you up when it comes to you know money talk. Look, it's bro. <laughs> that's what it, it's all. I hate to say it, but that's the name of the planet that you live on. You know, if you're gonna be honest, that's literally the name of the planet that you live on. So yeah, I'm gonna show you another book if you want to know. Uh, it's called. It came before Columbus. Yeah, you could tell I am kind of tired. Probably because I had a heavy meal as well. So um, like that, here bro. we go. I just had some too. So. All right, cool. So um, can you see this? Yeah. Oh, that's a, that's, a, that's a sculpture that they found. You see the title? Mm -hmm. Yep. They, they came, came before, before Columbus. Columbus. The African presence in ancient America. Mm. Okay? Mm -hmm. Yep. All right, so... If you want to study about that subject matter, there you go. I just I just basically gave it to you, right? Mm -hmm. uh, there's another book also called um, um hold on a second. It's called Don Voyage. On voyage. In the African There we go. There we go. All right. 
Can you see the title? Yes. Yep. Don Voyage, The Black African Discovery of America. Okay. And that book is written by a white man from Canada named Michael Bradley. Mm -hmm. So, like, w when we hear about, you know, how Christopher Columbus sold the so ocean. I'll, so, hold on. Before we say anything else. Yes. I just told you that book was written by a white man from Canada. Yes. Yep. All right. So, when people start to Afrocentric, shut up. Just tell them, shut up. You don't know what the word means, so stop using it. Mm -hmm. Okay? You've been told you're trying to make it a dirty word. Africa, African-centeredness is not a dirty word. In fact, it's a necessary step to step in to get away from Eurocentrism. Because Eurocentrism is the, is the mental disease that everybody has been under and has been subjected to in the world since Roman times. So, mm -hmm. you know. Mm. So what was the question? What are we what are we addressing? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I was gonna ask. Um back when we were hearing a whole lot of uh stories of how Christopher Columbus sold the ocean blue, how come we didn't get the inspiration, you know, to sell the ocean blue in that direction? Because you know, back then people thought that the you know world ended when you got far enough into the ocean. Like right. wasn't there a lot of like conflict with uh with a lot of uh you know like myths and legends of like you know African tradition you know passing along the idea that there is land on the other side of the water over there to like the I don't, you you kind of packed a lot into that statement there are assumptions in there presumptions questions mm -hmm. but they're all kind of entangled in there so you're going to have to separate some of that stuff and clearly ask what it is that you want to ask so i can give you a comprehensive answer okay so i guess i'll i'll Okay, let me let me let me segment this part of the question off. Uh, back when you know people used to think that the you know world ended if you go far enough to the west across the ocean. Well, when uh, you say people, what people thought that? Because black people, black people don't Western, have a history of thinking. I mean, uh, European you mean stupid people. white people. Yeah. Oh, okay, people. then say stupid white people. I white people. Yeah. Nah, okay. <laughs> don't say that. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> That's Aristotle, your words, bro. <laughs> Aristotle called them stupid. Aristotle said white people were stupid. Bro, you were all over the place. Earlier you were saying white people are stupid. Now you're saying white people are stupid. Like, <laughs> man. I told you I'm an equal opportunity hater. Black people are stupid. White people are stupid. I know that's why you can't call me racist. I tell everybody's stupid. So. <laughs> all right, Joseph, come on. Let's hear it. All right. So back when European people used to think that if you go far enough to the west across the ocean, the world would end, Don't what was the pushback uh, with, you know, because... It's obvious that, you know, within certain African countries, uh, there was contact with uh, land far enough west. So what was the pushback there? Was it was it just lost in history? Like, what was well, that who in, would, in African on. culture? Who would have been making the pushback against the presumption that the world was flat? This is why I'm saying your question is not being articulated well, uh, because you're not providing who this pushback should or would be coming from. When would this pushback be coming? Would it be coming back at the time that Columbus is making propositions? Is it coming back? Like, like when is this happening? When is this purported pushback or any potential pushback happening? That way we can make the question make sense because it's still not making sense. When Columbus was uh, getting his, his crew together, like... Uh... Because I, I believe it's oh, sort okay. of... Oh, yeah. I, 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 okay. I got you. I got you now. All yes. right. I, I needed context. Before I do that, I just want to I want to just find one thing here. Hold on one second. Uh, let me find this. Oh, what am I doing? I'm bugging out. Here we yes, go. another book. <laughs> um, actually, no, just something. I just want to show you guys that I wasn't being a smart ass um, when I said what I said. So let me click on this. All right. And then I'm going to... I'm going to open this wide, right? And then I'm going to share my screen so you can see this. Yes. What is it about that, Aristotle? When I tell you that, when I tell you that Aristotle, oh, we saw the that philosopher, a what? We saw that. Oh, Aristotle, I'm talking about um, uh, the people over in the northern parts of Europe. Okay, good. Are, All right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I showed you that already. Yeah, okay, yeah, cool. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I just wanted to make you think. I didn't want you to think. I know, I know what you meant. Trust me. I know what you meant. Trust me. This is not my own personal opinion. I always stick to the historical record. Mm -hmm. All right? White folks have a historical 
record of being considered stupid by everybody else in the world. I'm just saying. And they still lose no time in proving it. <laughs> okay? So, all right? I mean, you got to be hell of a stupid to elect anybody for president that's not talking about stopping mass shootings. Like, they talk about everything else but you're talking about who to vote for? You're a fucking idiot. Anyway, let me go back to what I was saying. Um, so, remember I told you uh, everything revolves around black people, right? Yes. So, mm -hmm. the navigator um, who got Columbus's lost white ass over here was a black Moor by the name of Alonzo Pena, I think his name was. I'll tell him to you right now. Hold on one second. Um, you know, we always solving white people's problems. Even in New York, when a white person is lost and they're, you're, you're out in the middle of the street, they don't walk up to another white person to ask for directions. They always walk up to a black person. There's a reason for that. <laughs> Bro, today, it, some guy, I'm, I'm in Worcester, which is like an hour from Boston. Some guy was literally walking by like the pizzeria in Worcester asking where's Boston? Like he's walking. He's not driving. He's asking like where's where's Boston? <laughs> I'm thinking, yeah, yeah. Just go by Route 9 and just walk for like yes, 10 hours. Right. You'll get there. Yeah, bro. You exactly. gotta get the stuff. Okay. All right. Uh hold on one second. So now I'm going to put this link in the chat. Please look at the last chink that I link that I put in the chat. Hey, so man, the is coming throw, out, bro. The chink. Bird can throw it up on the screen. So people don't think I'm making stuff up. I don't make up anything. It's, you know, people just, people are ignorant of the historical record. That's the black man that got Christopher Columbus to America. Mm. That man right there. He's yeah. not black. Okay. See, that's another thing, too, about people. People look at statues. Well, first of all, make sure that's a statue of him and not Christopher Columbus. Who, who's the statue of? Uh, isn't it? This is a this is a statue of uh of our guy, Pedro. Pedro. I mean, but it says right there he was known as El Negro. Monument to it doesn't say monument of it says monument to a monument to Pedro Alfonso uh, Nino at the Corbin. All right, so it's a monument to him. Ooh, and that, they didn't say it was a monument of him. Okay. Oh. It's a monument to him. So I don't know what the fuck that means because you can clearly see in the article where it says biography. What did the, what did the first line say? Nino was born in Moguer, Spain. He was known as El Negro. As what? El Negro. How many white people you know walking around called El Negro? <laughs> El Negro. Okay? He was a yeah. black man. He was a Moor. And He's the one that got Columbus over here. And a lot of people have stereotypes in their minds about what black people look like. Oh, so he was he was mixed. He was this, he was half Spanish, half African. Well, he hold on one second. Yeah, hold on. Right. All right. So his father was non Nino, a Spanish sailor, right? And his mother mm -hmm. was an unknown African woman. All right, so here's the thing. All right, so he all right, so by American by American law, he was black. Right, they say yeah. with the one drop rule, he's a black man. I don't personally subscribe to that. I say he was biracial. All right, but here's the thing though: just because his father was a Spanish sailor does not mean that his father was not black. You could be black and still be Spanish. Okay, mm -hmm. all uh, but Spanish is not a euphemism for white. Spain is a country. Spain is not a race, yeah. and it's a country that was occupied by blacks before it was occupied by whites. Anyway. You have to remember, if you fart in Africa, you can smell it in Spain. It's that close. Yeah. Okay? It's literally that close. And you have to remember, the Iberian Peninsula had been colonized by Africans long before the first Europeans showed up. And then it got colonized by Punic persons, right? Phoenicians, Hebrews, and or God knows who else. Right? So, you know, uh, and then you have the um, the Moorish contingency or the African um, uh, uh, Senegambian Moorish uh, 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 um, element or leadership of the Moors um, 
who were all over Spain, right? So the best book to read on that is, I'll send you another link. Hold on one second, just so you can. Um... But when you when, when you pass away one day, they gotta like dissect your brain and like build a library off of all the books that you know, bro. I swear. He lived mm. for fifty years. <gasps> long time back then. Let me see. Here we go. Uh, um, what is it? What is it? The Moors of Spain? Yeah, I know what it's called. I think this is it. Uh, I've been man. After this, we're gonna have to go on to the next couple ones because we're trying to get this going fast. Yeah. Cause... Okay, hold on one second. Moorish. Oh, I know what it's called. Yeah. Pedro Alonso Nino. Yeah, he's the one that got Columbus over here. And so because he uh was a navigator, mm -hmm. um he knew the um earth wasn't flat. Mm -hmm. The Moors the Moors didn't think that the earth was flat. That makes sense. Neither did the, Ch the Chinese didn't think the earth was flat. That was just a bunch of dumb white people. With all due respect. You know, white people like to talk about IQ. I mean, like, look, you don't want to have that conversation. <laughs> you, mm -hmm. you really don't. Okay? Man, I so, never know when you're being sarcastic. Because earlier, I knew you were talking about, like, black people, white, white, white people say that black people have low IQs. And you're like, well, it's true. I don't know if you're being sarcastic. And I'm like, man, you know it's not true. But... Now you're saying like I know, think I think I think I think that all races have their stupid people, and that the stupid people in all races outnumber the intelligent people. Oh yes, yeah. So the stupid people amongst black people outnumber intelligent black people. The stupid people amongst white people outnumber the intelligent white people. The stupid people amongst the Chinese outnumber the intelligent. Like people in America have this fantasy that all Chinese people have high IQs and they study hard and uh, it's bullshit. A lot of them dumb as fuck. I watched two videos today. Two two mentally not right Chinese dudes in the head climbed into a, a cage with a lion. One with a lion and one with a tiger. That's really intelligent, huh? You know. So <laughs> you know. Don't fall for the okie dokes. Don't believe everything you hear. But here's the difference. The real comparison is when you take our stupid versus your stupid. Right? Let's get all of our stupid people together and let's do a versus with all of your stupid people. That will tell you who's got the high IQ. <laughs> okay? I'm not going to lie. Joseph looking extra white with that with lighting, bro. You wanna, you might want to dim that a little bit, man. I can turn it. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, it's because of my monitor. My, my everything hey, around uh, me. Is hey, uh, verse, click, click the last link that I sent you and put it on the screen. Golden age of the moon. Of the what? More, sorry, my fault. Golden age of the Moors. Read that book, and you'll have a whole different perspective on who's Spanish and who's not. Mm. Okay, Spanish is not a race. Spanish is the ethnicity that is related to a land called Spain, which used to be called um, Al Andalus. Okay, I say interesting actually. Yeah. Speaking of um, the, the ethnicity <clears throat> and not, it's not a racist ethnicity thing. Every time I take an exam, like a standardized exam in school, they always ask like first thing they ask is like, um, "Are you Hispanic or Latino or whatever?" You gotta like either check yes or no, and then they ask. Okay, so are you black? Are you, you know, uh, Asian American? Are you called? It's like the first thing they want to clarify is whether or not you're a um, Latino or Hispanic guy. I, I never understood that. I'm not gonna lie. Even when I apply for jobs and stuff, it's always like the first thing that shows up, and then they ask for like, "Oh, that music." Do you have any idea why? Is there like a reason for that? Or, well, yeah. I mean, the, the one thing about um, this system, it works over classification mm. and classifying. Classifying is how they. That's how they rule people through the art and the science of classification. So everything for them is classification mm. down to the minutest detail. Yeah. Okay. It's just more information.
the less the less information they have, the more power you have. Jeez. I yeah. know that deep. <laughs> like, so I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm make sure I'm, I I read that question carefully as if it's one of. The oh yeah, when well, I feel those things out, I put I'm Chinese, I'm a female, <laughs> and I got blonde hair and blue eyes. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm a Chinese not. female with blonde hair and blue eyes. What else you need to know? <laughs> Give me all them perks. <laughs> all the all the premiums that come along with that. You know. All right, come on. Let's let's finish this up, man. This is. Putting my boy shock out of sleep. Let's get some some juicy stuff going. I just read through read through this. Yeah, that's part of it too, man. Like the subject matter, the topic's kind of it's kind of like yeah. You're just like man, this yeah. is elementary basic stuff. Like what am I doing? Basically, <laughs> basically, pretty hey, We're gonna wrap it up and then we're gonna go on to the fun stuff. Hopefully in a little bit, but let's um uh yeah. Alex, finish you want to finish the list or you just want to go to the video? Go 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 past the list. Go finish off these for the rest of this list and then we'll go ahead and uh, we'll, we'll watch all right. Uh, what's this we'll number three? Many black slaves were allowed to hold jobs, own businesses, and own real estate. All right, next one. Brutal black on black slavery was common in Africa for thousands of years. Oh, right. okay. Go, hold on. Go back. Go I back to the first one. All right, go, go back yeah. to the first one. Say, I, I'm going to respond to each one as you go. So yeah, go that's fine. That's fine. So the one with the black people, oh, there were many black people, not not black people, many black people held jobs, owned businesses, black owned slaves. Businesses. Yeah, black slaves. I, 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 I um, don't know how that to... part is true. Huh? That mm. part is true. Huh? Why you said huh? How? They scroll up, Joseph. Ain't no. You said way. how? What do you mean? They're slaves. How you own, own real estate and businesses, man? <laughs> oh, see, there's a lot you don't know about slavery, bro. You, you've been lied to about about a oh, lot of it. God. Not all of it. But you've been lied to about a lot of it has been omitted to be quite honest right a lot of it has been omitted in fact um i'm looking at one of my powerpoints now um where i had to spank somebody about this very subject matter um here you go right here i'm gonna pull it up for you Bro, hold on one second you're only on bullet point three and i'm already lost but literally on the footnote, it says, under these early codes, slaves had virtually no legal rights in most areas. They could be executed for crimes that were not capital offenses for whites. Their That's testimony right. was restricted right. in legal cases and could not be used That's either right. for or against whites. Trials of slaves were usually by special courts. Slaves could not own property, move about without consent of their owners, or legally marry. True. So that like contradicts the first uh, original point saying that they were allowed to own businesses. Well, no, 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 that's not true. Um, that's what I'm looking for right now. So I can show it to you on the screen so you can actually see the real documentation. Because mm -hmm. I don't really know what you're looking at. So I try to just stick to the real documentation. I you understand what I'm saying? So just yeah. give me one. If you could give me a second, I'll see what I could bring up. Uh, That's actually so messed up. Uh, their testimony was restrained in legal cases and cannot be used either or for against whites. Yeah, because you wasn't a human in this society. You you were basically uh, an animal. I still gotta understand how people are running businesses as slaves. Like that sounds like some some cool ass shit, bro. You you got my respect, man. If you a slave and you own a business, bro, like you just the greatest <laughs> yes. greatest human being. Greatest. Ever, bro. <laughs> well, you gotta get used to that because it's it's very true. You know, it's it's uh, true. Oh, here we go. Is this one of them. Okay, here you go. All right, so I'm gonna share my screen with you. This is from one of my old PowerPoints. Okay, here you go. Lord, I feel like it's gonna be like the owner of peanut butter or some shit. Like, remember people saying that like people invented peanut butter or something? Nah, like, he's talking about. Oh, uh, seriously, you don't know who Dr. George Washington Carver is? I heard of him. That's embarrassing, bro. Oh god, that's like asking a white boy if you ever heard of George Washington. He's like, oh, sounds familiar. Did you live down the block? Did you live down the block? Okay. Right? So, here you go. This is from one of my older... I don't even think I ever did this one publicly. All right. Um, This is from what? Read this. Cambridge World History of Slavery, part 16. Page 16. Page 16. Okay. That's and this is the subject day. matter. You see the subject matter? Some slaves owned fields slash land. 
Okay, read that. Some slaves owned fields. Do you want me to read the Jabari? Uh, no, 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 no. Um, okay. hold on one second. Um, hold on, hold on. Some slaves own field. Hold on one second. Uh. All right, so let me tell you what this one was about. Yeah. Hold on one second. Okay, so um, I thought I would have had more there, but um, the bottom line is that it's there. Some slaves own fields. Some slaves owned fields, right? So I had this in here because I was doing a comparison of slavery in ancient Egypt and slavery in America. And mm -hmm. this gentleman on the screen was trying to tell me I didn't know what I was talking about. And that slavery in Egypt was very different from slavery in America. And what I was trying to document for him and what I did document is that they were basically damn near virtually identical. In fact, the system of slavery seems to have been learned from what they learned in Africa, in Egypt. So I was just basically documenting it for him. And mm -hmm. so you'll see right here in the Cambridge World History of Slavery on page 16, it says some slaves owned fields. It didn't say rented fields. It says owned fields. Okay? Here's mm -hmm. the documentation. I found it. It's right here. Okay? Could you read this? Somebody, anybody? A, ownership of fields slash land by slaves. Some slaves own fields slash land. Documentation. In the low country, slaves generally were allowed all the land they could tend without rent, an average of perhaps four to five acres, far more than any person could tend. Our now, master yo, I don't even know many people that got four to five acres today. How many black folks you know got four or five acres of land? I'll, I'll be lucky if I could even get the credit to get one acre of land, bro. All right. Yeah. So read that part again. In the low country, slaves generally were allowed all the land they could tend without rent, an average of perhaps four to five acres, far more than any person could tend. Our master allowed us slaves to own property, one low country at slaves summed up, and gave us as much land as we could work in our own time. That's from what? That's from, read this. Slavery's Other Economy, pages 47 and 48, The Claims of Kinfolk, African-American Property and Community in the 19th Century South by Dylan C. Penningroth. See, that's what you call scholarship. That's not making Man, up. Some I'm sorry, story. but I gotta applaud that, bro. I, I, the fact yeah, that you got like documentation for every question that we're asking so yeah, far, that, that's, that's impressive. That's impressive. I don't, I don't do this. A lot of people do this, and when you ask them to document a few, that's when they got. Oh, I gotta go for the store for my mommy. It's like, oh, you did, you came to play. Because like, uh, I'm just just for the people watching. Like, we have not even planned this. This was just like him coming on, and he just so happens to have all this documentation like right for the question yeah. that we're asking for. It's, it's, he has the credentials. Amen. Hey, it's true. It's there, bro. Like it, it literally is. Like it's all right there. You just gotta. I mean, I've done the work because a lot of people get cocky when they try to debate me, and I usually kind of bait them into it because I like them to get. I build them up just so I can. <laughs> I let them build themselves up so when I knock them down, it just looks better. But oh yeah, all of the documentation is there. They own. Think about it. They own. They, they said their masters let them own as much land as they can till, and didn't charge them. Hmm. So, like when they when they got the products from that land, did they give it to their masters to sell? Probably gave them a portion of it. Oh. You know, because that's how sharecropping got started. Probably, possibly, but it seems like for the most part, the master probably didn't need it. Hmm. If I can afford to give you four or five acres of land. For free and not charge you. <laughs> Do you honestly really think I need whatever you producing out of it? Nah, yeah. Damn, that's so. It's, uh, that's me I... owning you makes my equity go up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Thanks. But they would have to tend to the to their own lands on top of like tending to the master's lands, probably, yes. right? Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. That's what they would do in their own quote unquote. If you're pardon the pun free time i guess if you want to like rank the um the level of, of property the slave owning the four acres is like today that would be like maybe like you know four unit rental property like family you know uh, uh multi-family you know rental as opposed to like the the um slave master owning the slave that's like a <laughs> that's like some like some high-rise commercial real estate type stuff so like you know if you compare the the level of property like it's probably isn't even close 
So that's what it is, right? So when they yeah. say that your first point that slaves own businesses, well, if you consider real estate a business, For then sure. yeah, they did. They own land. Mm. Right, that's dope. Right? All right, next one, next one. Surely you don't got documentation for this next one coming. I don't know what is it. What is it? Um, brutal black. I I, I don't know. I'll, I'll go right now. Brutal black on black slavery was common in Africa for thousands of years. Facts. Okay. Most slaves brought to America from Africa were purchased from black slave owners. True. Really. Most, yeah. Um, so you will have to understand Africa, um, you have to understand Africa from, uh, I would say the seventh century, sixth century CE of the common era up till about the 15th century, up until the port, up, up until Portuguese hegemony. So you have to, in other words, you would have to understand Africa, particularly West Africa, you would have to understand Africa um, from the advent of Islam in the sixth, seventh century, really the eighth century, to be quite honest. Right? Let's just say Islam in the eighth century, because they actually make Islam older than it actually is. Um, so to be generous, I'll say seventh century. From the seventh, eighth century, we talk about Islam, um, all the way up until the Portuguese, Columbus, Spain, right? All of that stuff. The Papal Bulls, right? The Rex Pontificus and um, and I forgot which one the other one is, but um, what you have to understand is that how can I put this? Um, slavery. Okay, see if you can wrap your mind around this. Slavery began in Africa. Okay. Slavery did not start in Europe, okay? Slavery started in Africa. Um, the lie that many black people and many Africans like to tell the world is that it was a different kind of slavery, that you were basically just part of the family kind of thing. That's some bullshit, <laughs> okay? Um, they like to tell you that, the biggest lie they like to tell you, that the biggest lie that black people like to tell you is that slavery in America was, or what made the difference between African slavery and slavery in America is that slavery in Africa was more like servitude while slavery in America was chattel slavery. Chattel slavery meaning that your existence and your very being was reduced to that of a commodity, something to be bought and sold or just discarded and thrown away. And they tell you that that was the difference. What they and, and, and that's a lie. Chattel slavery did not start in America. Chattel slavery started in Africa. You know what parts of Africa? I'm just curious. Yes, I'm, Egypt. I'm, I'm Western ancient and Egypt, Eastern. ancient oh. Kemet. In ancient Kemet, in ancient Egypt, that's where chattel slavery started. 